Here we have a very interesting uh, Kapala set. I will try to put it together. As you can see, it has a fitted spinach green stand and the Kapala itself is of course here fitted so it goes together nicely. I think I have, I'm showing you the back now. So this is the front and the, the jade stand is perfectly matched so that the that the Kapala sits really well here. Nevertheless, we think that the state is sand is later than the Kapala because we think that the Kapala has probably an age, the pebble of at least 3000 years. It's, it's not marble, it's not jade, it's, uh, it's calcite or quartzite, uh, a very ancient material which was used in uh, Central Asia uh, by the um, Assyrians, by the Babylonians, uh, by the ancient Egypt people, um, by the Achaemenid people, and by the Bactrians as a material to carve ritual objects. We know that the, the Kapala, the skull-shaped ceremonial bowl, if you will, appeared in northern India around uh, the 9th, 8th to 9th century, in the early Pala period. And only from there, during the Chidar, it made its way uh, through traveling Tibetan monks who brought the first Kapalas, still completely undecorated at the time, um, to Tibet. The patina outside here shows uh, an ancient pebble, uh, which has several thousand years of age. And it might well be that as a pebble, it served already uh, a ritual purpose in, in an ancient population in Central or Western Asia, maybe 3,000 years ago or more. But only in India, uh, it was eventually cut in two halves to uh, become this Kapala uh, bowls uh, that uh, can be used as libation bowls. We know that uh, from the Dakini picture, the pictures, for instance, in the, in the later Tibetan art from the 18th or 19th century, drinking, supposed to be drinking blood in a ritual out of these, out of these bowls. But that was not customary in India in the Pala area. During the Pala area, these were not decorated. They are just plain. Nevertheless, the fittings here are made in a way that you can clearly see that this is already done uh, to fit perfectly. So we assume that it was brought from, from northern India where it served already as a kapala uh, during the Chidar to Tibet where it was preserved in monasteries for a long time until eventually it came to the imperial court in China. Now we know that in the 18th century, the emperor Qianlong invited many of the most important Tibetan monks, including the Dalai Lama, and bestowed a lot of uh, imperial works of art to them. And we think that this jade base was made exactly at that time, because as you can see, this is a solid, massive piece of spinach green uh, nephrite, neatly carved. And the interesting thing to note here is that you have uh, the petals exactly as they were customary in the Pala period. We know this from Pala bronzes. They have these similar petals which are not really indented at the lower end. And this is a hint uh, to the Pala background of this Kapala. Now here you have a classic bead line also, which was used in the Pala period and then in early uh, Tibetan Buddhist statues from the 13th, 14th century. And then here you have a classic Chinese uh, double petal lotus water, which is obviously those two borders symbolize the convergence and the assimilation between what is the Tibetan Buddhism and the Chinese uh, religions at the Manchu court in the uh, Qing dynasty during the rule of the Qianlong emperor. So this is clearly the work of the uh, uh, workshops in Suchao, which did a lot of commissions for the imperial court. 
we know that also because there is another example uh, which sold uh, at Sotheby's Hong Kong for a crazy price for like 600,000 euros, which looks essentially the same as this piece. But um, funny enough, it is uh, the pebble is from Jade, as you can see carved after uh, the prototype here. And it has an inscription which tells us that it was bestowed to the eight Dalai Lama by the Emperor Qianlong personally in the year 1783. So we know there is this history of uh, bestowing important works of art. We think that the Tibetan monk brought this beautiful calcite ancient kapala uh, to the uh, forbidden city to perform their rituals and that uh, Emperor Qianlong commissioned this space to be made specifically for this valuable kapala. Eventually, it made its way many, many years back into the West, where it ended uh, in the collection of a noted jade collector in the United Kingdom who lived in the 60s, 70s, and built a vast collection. Uh, it was then inherited by the son, who continued collecting with less volume because the collection was already very big. So it has very good provenance. And it's assumed that it has uh, appeared in the UK auction market in the 1950s or 60s from someone uh, who brought it uh, either from Tibet or somewhere else in Asia or maybe even China. Uh, we put a reasonable price on it, 4,000 euros. I think there's a lot of room here uh, to acquire this uh, exceptional piece of ancient history, and I wish you good luck in bidding.